So I'm down here, I'm, I should say, I'm up here. <laughs> I'm up here in, in the wonderful town of Woodbridge in Suffolk on the River Deben. I've previously called it the River Devon, which obviously is a travesty. And I'm here, really, I was, um, I'm here for the, the Woodbridge Ambient Music Festival. But the thing that most enticed me in a way is, A, I love ambient music, as you'll know, because you'll hear it all over these videos. But the combination of ambient music and a celebration of the River Deben, the campaign to save the Deben, to keep it clean, to keep it fresh, to keep, to protect the biodiversity of the Deben. Um, and of course, Woodbridge is the birthplace of Brian Eno, the great Brian Eno, the inventor of ambient music. So this is a beautiful day ahead. Um, got some great contributions from wonderful people here talking about the Deben, talking about the importance of the Deben, and talking about just the amazing kind of culture that this river has created here in Suffolk. And as you'll know, this is an unbelievably historic place. This is very close here to Sutton Hoo, where I visited quite a few years ago with the family, made a video. Rendlesham Forest is just up there with this compelling UFO story and the UFO trail. Again, that's a video on this channel. All sorts of things here. And the town itself dates way, way back. Really important place in the Anglo-Saxon period. And of course, the Anglo-Saxons arrived here on the River Deben in their longships. One such was buried in Sutton Hoo, the famous ship burial, and there's a replica of that ship in the long shed here. Jerry, what can you tell me about the, the Deben? Well, the Deben is a beautiful river. It's a part of Woodbridge, there's no doubt about that. It, 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 for many, many years, people have come and have settled there to come up that river. And uh, a couple of years back, the wonderful Jan Pulsford decided she, she needed to celebrate it. And along with the, the um, councillor, Caroline Page, sadly she has passed away recently, they got together and they got this Woodbridge Ambient Music Festival. And the ambient bit comes in from the wonderful Brian Eno from the old days with Roxy Music. He, as they say, invented ambient music. And last year was our first year, it was absolutely brilliant, up and along the river. We do, I'm a storyteller, I'm a poet. So I did some stories and poetry. We had wonderful performers, musicians, we had singers, we had dancers, we had some yoga, anything up and along this beautiful river. And we're back again today, and as you can see, absolutely terrific turnout again. Terrific turnout, so that's, the gist of the River Deben at the moment, <laughs> anyway. So. Well, if we just look to the left there a little bit, it's the tide mill. And they grind the corn in there. It's a tidal mill. And this is the river that has kept people from starvation for many, 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 many years. And of course, back to the old days, you had the Trinovantians, you had the Celts used to come up this river. The Anglo-Saxons came up, the Vikings came up. And of course, just up the river there slightly as well is the Sutton Hoo. And all those treasures came up this river. And that is, you know, part of the history of, of the beautiful river. Let's just take a little stroll, short way along the, along the Deben. When I walked along the Deben before, it was, I think it was New Year's Eve or the 30th of December, it was freezing. There's a lot going on in this tree, isn't there? Melton that way. That is actually, I think, where Brian Eno was born. I'm not sure what the skeleton's doing. Wow, what a beautiful spot. And the famous ship burial at Sutton Hoo is just on the hill over there, just across the river. And I guess it's supposed that the burial site was chosen for its commanding view over the river and over the river valley. At the time of the discovery of the Sutton Hoo ship burial by Basil Brown, a local archaeologist. And it was, the, it was on the eve of the breakout of the Second World War. There's that film, The Dig. You can watch a variation of the story. But at the time they said, the dark ages are dark no more. Suddenly it just opened a lid in that whole period of time. And you can't look at the 
the jewellery, for example, the beauty of the jewellery, and think of that era in the same way ever again. And there have, since then there have been other various Anglo-Saxon hordes from a similar period and later. And it is just, it, I, I'm, it leaves me speechless. It's not just the literature that we uncovered, but also the, let's say, the beauty that they, uh, of that work and the amount of craft and time and trouble that was put into it. It really was an era of, of uh, you know, I'm lost for words. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. <laughs> One theory is that the, is the burial site of Red Wild. I think that's right, Red Wild. Red, I put the actual name on the screen. And it, it, seventh century king of East Anglia, but he was the most powerful of all the kings in England, of course, the unification of England into one single kingdom came much, much later. I think was it was it Athelstan, King uh, King Alfred's grandson, who finally creates the kingdom of England. Until that point, there are a number of kingdoms across the land, and it was the king of East Anglia in the seventh century that was the dominant king. So this area really is, if you think about England, post-Roman England, England's only a notion that comes into being really much later. Eight, was it Alfred the Great, 9th century? 10th century, it becomes a reality. Just over a thousand years, really. And really the story of that part of our history, really, you could say starts here because of its location on the east coast of England facing Scandinavia facing northern Germany, Frisia, the Netherlands, Denmark and all that jazz. This was the main entry point into England. Obviously, I'm sure there'll be Yorkshire people going in the comments right now. <laughs> I've got to say Kentish people will be screaming at their screens. What about Hengist and Horsa, they will say, quite rightly. Not to mention what the people of Essex, <laughs> East Saxons will say. That was uh, today's episode of Rubbish History of John Rogers. I'll try to correct as much of that on the screen as possible. I think you get the gist though, don't you? I think you get East Anglia, the Angles, English being Angle-ish. Clutching at straws once again. I'm a Woodbridge resident and I'm here as a, a lover of the river. I swim in the river all year round. No wetsuits allowed. Um, I swim in the river all year round and I absolutely love the estuary. I bring my children here and it's such a beautiful area. So I'm helping with the campaign to basically make sure that the Deben stays clean as it should have. And the river has rights as well. So for those of you who've never come across the River Deben before, it originates west of Debenham and it's about 25 miles long, meandering through Suffolk countryside before entering the North Sea at Felixstowe Ferry. At Broomswell, halfway along its course, it widens to a magnificent tidal estuary, sheltering a multitude of wildlife, avocets, seals, fish, and the occasional otter. All along its journey, the River Deben feeds wetlands, water meadows and other habitats delivering life-giving nutrients to Suffolk's coastal estuaries and the North Sea, transporting sediment teeming with microlife. The river itself also has rights like we do. We want to enjoy the river but the river has rights and these are the rights of the River Deben. Acting in solidarity with communities across the world, we declare the following rights for the River Deben. The right to flow freely, the right to be free from pollution, the right to perform essential functions within its ecosystem. The right to native biodiversity. The right to regeneration and restoration. The right to feed and be fed by sustainable aquifers and the right to maintain its connections with other streams and rivers. We act as the river guardians, reducing the threat to its well-being. And today, all those who hear this right, we ask you to engage with the river in a relationship of respect and stewardship. I'm going to take a little bit of a break from the, from the music and the river and have a look at the historic town of Woodbridge, which is a really beautiful town. Very small, but really beautiful. This is the thoroughfare. 
one of the main streets of Woodbridge. Woodbridge has um, it has timber framed Tudor buildings, it has uh, Georgian buildings, Victorian buildings, it's got a, a great range of historical architecture. And I think it dates from the from the 10th century at the very least, although the Romans were in the area but didn't leave a lot behind. Most amazing pies, look at that. These buildings here certainly look well, they've got a decent age about them, don't they? And that timber-framed building there certainly has the, uh, the appearance of a Tudor, the Tudor building. And that's a jolly old face above the door there. It's lovely. The Church of St Mary the Virgin. It's not among the listed, uh, you know, the, there's a leaflet that just has pictures of notable buildings. This isn't one of them. It is a beautiful building, so it makes me wonder whether it's some sort of Victorian construction in the, in the style of a Norman church. And here's the magnificent Woodbridge Shire Hall, which has been the seat of, well, public gathering, I guess it wouldn't have been a town council, but of public events for over 450 years. It's 17th century. Upstairs was used for civic functions, downstairs, was an open corn market and it's still used by the town council to this day. What a beautiful building. For those of you with a, an interest and a knowledge in architecture, apparently it has Flemish gabling. Okay. Even as a sequence of words, that's quite beautiful, isn't it? Flemish gabling. That's the Bull Inn, which has the look of a, an old coaching inn, doesn't it? It's got that written all over it, particularly its position here at the bottom of the Market Hill and the town square. I had dinner in there after I went to Orford Ness two years ago. It was really nice, lovely place. Now the King's Head Inn up there. I went in there with a family at dinner in there when we stayed in Woodbridge for a couple of days when I went to Sutton Hoo and Rendlesham Forest. And I remember going in there, I think that is medieval, that building. And it certainly has the look of it. You see the walls there bowing, the old timbers all bent. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I think I might need to go back in there at some point today, just to examine the history of it, perhaps. No other reason. And the angel just up there looks like another very old timber frame building, doesn't it? That looks like it's got the, could be of Tudor origin, it's distinctly old and, look at that, what a beauty. It's time to go and listen to some music, right? We will come back up through the town and I will probably go to the King's Head at some point. Just to check on the, the quality of the Adnams, you kind of got to when you're in Suffolk. I mean, I've got to be honest with you, I feel obliged to drink Adnams whenever I see it. And I'm in the county where it was brewed, but it'd be some sort of heresy, some sort of travesty to not have a pint of Adnams just up the road from where it's brewed in Southwold. Let's go. I'm also wondering about Sabold. I've got my I've got my copy of Rings of Saturn with me. He must have. Is it in? I don't think it is in Rings of Saturn. He goes to Orford Ness, but then he goes to um, from there. I don't know. He don't, I don't think he comes to Woodbridge, but I will check in the pub later. So now we go up this beautiful little lane to the next venue, the Methodist Church. And this is actually Brook Street, so I'm going to take a shot in the dark as there's a brook running beneath the ground. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Wow, and there's the Methodist Church. What an impressive building that is and what a wonderful venue for the music of Jay Chakravorty, amongst many others, of course. Saw Jay back in February, I haven't already mentioned that, and uh, it's one of the reasons I'm here. 
So really looking forward to this next program of ambient music. Well, that was fantastic. Uh, Tom Rogerson at the end, Jay Trakravorty, and I think the first act was called Elegy for a Good Dog, I think. What a wonderful name. They were all brilliant, really. And that room was fantastic. Wow, what an amazing day this has been. There's another four hours of music to come, but I feel like I have an obligation to go into the King's Head. We'll send, sample some Adnam somewhere. Well, if this isn't a Tudor house, I don't know what is. Probably turn out it's not a Tudor house, but that will prove the point, I guess. <laughs> what a beautiful old pile, though. And another beautiful timber framed building here. The old bell and steam yard. I realise now it's actually the old bell that I went into those years ago with my family and had dinner there and that's, yeah, that's the building that's got some proper age to it. Would you believe that I only had a half? Well, I did because the sunset was much sooner than I thought. So <laughs> I had a half, sculled it quickly, and now we've got to go down to the river, the River Deben for the sunset. And you can see the tide is all the way in now, isn't it? The harbour is full. Time for more music, time for more music, more music for the River Deben. And the long shed there with its replica of the famous long ship of the ship burial is the, uh, is the venue for tonight's music. Can't wait. Well, what an amazing day and what, what an incredible end to an amazing day because the headline act at the end of the day was, a, was an old mate of mine who we, we used to write together over 25, 25 years ago. We wrote a show together, Andy, Andy Dobson, performing as uh, Of The Night Sky and what an incredible performance it was. Even if I didn't know Andy and I hadn't seen him for a few years, that still would have been an astonishing end to the day. But, I, must have, I had no idea. Anyway, what a beautiful, I'm sort of really touched by all of that. Um, and lovely to see my mate Tom there as well, quite by surprise. So, ah, fantastic. Well done, Jan, for organising such an incredible festival, such an amazing spirit of place that's been captured in today's event. So thank you for coming along with me on that slightly different video. Of course, well, very different video in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways not. Rivers again, the rivers, it's all about the rivers. So as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing the next walk wherever that may be. And maybe in the next video, I'll have a link where you can order the book with a bit of luck. <laughs>